Hello there, and welcome to the story about Russian chess immigration. Soviets are good at chess. We all know that. But was it always the case? 1929, 1934, the Frenchman Alexander Alyokhin, the defending champion, is challenged by a German player Yefim Bogolyubov for the world chess title. It's quite obvious that both players were born in Russian Empire. Why didn't they represent the Soviet Union? In this video here, we will learn about the path of Yefim knighted E6 as Rusty Neo in the knee Bogolyubov towards German citizenship. Our story starts in 1914. Deutsches Schachbund, the German Chess Association, hosted its 19th Congress in Mannheim, in the Duchy of Baden, at southwest of German Empire in today's Germany. It was not uncommon for local and national organizations to host international tournaments at that time since there was no global organization such as FIDE. The same year St. Petersburg hosted a competition involving many international players. The tournament in Mannheim started on the 21st of July and it had to be suspended already after 11th round when Germany declared war on Russia on the 1st of August. One might wonder from today's perspective, why wasn't the tournament cancelled even before? It is true that the Archduke was already assassinated in Sarajevo on the 28th of June, however Austrian reaction was still unclear. Austria waited for another month to issue an ultimatum to Serbia, which was then followed by Russian full mobilization, to which Germany responded by the declaration of war on Russia. The world arena was very unstable at the beginning of the new century. There were two Moroccan crises around Tangiers and two Balkan wars, one of which ended only a year before the Mannheim tournament. Russian consul that was stationed in Mannheim has warned the chess players to leave immediately one day before the start of the war. However, they were not interested and only one followed the suggestion and left. The rest of the players stayed waiting for the payout of the partial prize fund according to the preliminary standings based on which Alohin was leading the tournament. The payout was delayed until 3rd of August which was already Monday. While waiting for the payout of the prize fund, the chess players were questioned by the local police. They attracted attention due to Alyokhin's photograph where he's wearing a military uniform. In fact, it is not an officer's uniform as the investigators thought, but a uniform from his law school. Alyokhin was a student still. Here he is depicted in the same uniform, playing against Capablanca on the same year in St. Petersburg. Since Russian consul already left, a Spanish consul was assigned to help the Russians in Mannheim and he suggested them to travel to Baden-Baden, the capital of the duchy, and to try to reach neutral Switzerland from there. The chess players followed his advice and boarded on the train. They were unfortunate enough to encounter an overzealous conductor that reported them to the military authorities, claiming that Russian spies are on board of his train. It is very hard to imagine that spies would be traveling in large groups, attracting attention by speaking in their own language, but you don't want to leave anything to doubt when the fate of the nation is at stake. Army captured chess players in Hachstadt, which was a military fortress just one station before Bad Baden, and escorted them to the fortress under very very unpleasant circumstances. They were threatened to be shot the next morning for espionage. Fortunately the misunderstanding was cleared but the players were not set free and they were kept in the local military prison. Alyokhin would later claim that it was during this time that he mastered the skill of blindfold chess, practicing it often with his cellmates. I'm linking below in the description a game of Alyokhin against Bagalubov from this time. Please have a look. Soon the order was issued that the sick would be allowed to leave, but everybody else fit for conscription will be interned and will have to spend the rest of the army in German prison. 
Alyokhin prepared well for this situation, refusing to eat for several days. Other witnesses say that he was claiming mental illness and another witness was saying that it was Alyokhin's family's connection that helped him escape. Nevertheless, it is the fact that Alyokhin, together with Bagadichuk, Saburov, who was a Russian diplomat, and Kopelman were allowed to leave. Ironically, Alyokhin joined the war after reaching Russia as a part of the medical personnel on the front. Since all the borders were closed, they had to circumvent Germany from west, going through neutral Switzerland via France, United Kingdom, Scandinavia, reaching Finland, which was under Russian Empire, and finally arriving to St. Petersburg after more than a month of travel. The rest of the group was transferred to a picturesque town close to the Swiss border called Triberg, where they were kept under more liberal conditions, which allowed them to become the stars of the local chess tournaments in which they participated eight times. Bagalubov stayed there until the end of the war. He met a woman whom he married and he had two daughters together. Back home, the situation was not very stable. In 1917, the Russian Revolution broke out, followed by the Civil War. It was only in 1924 when the economic situation stabilized a little with the introduction of so-called NEP, the new economic policy that introduced elements of market capitalism. In 1924, Galubov, together with Silesnyov, responded to the invitation of Russian Chess Federation headed by Nikolai Krylenko and decided to play in the USSR. Bogolubov returned as a much stronger player. He became the champion of Soviet Union in 24 and 25. Bogolubov was the star of 1925 Moscow tournament when he finished first ahead of Capablanca, even though he lost him again. This tournament was the pinnacle of efforts of Soviet chess to popularize the game among proletariat. Following year, Bagalubov was invited to a tournament in Rome. Since he was a citizen of USSR, fascist government of Italy denied him an entry visa. This greatly upset Bagalubov, who decided to withdraw from Soviet citizenship so that he could travel to all the tournaments in the future. He wrote a letter addressed to Nikolai Krylenka explaining his reasons. According to his words, by not participating in Rome, he lost an opportunity to regain financial balance and he didn't want to request any compensation from the USSR Chess Federation knowing that Soviet Union was a very poor country. At the end of the letter, he restates that his motivation is purely financial, probably wanting to say that it should not be interpreted in political terms. However, that is exactly what happened. It was yet another hard blow for the Soviet Chess Federation that lost Alyokhin, the best player, just a few years ago. And now, the star of the Moscow tournament is leaving them. It was not only the Soviet citizenship that Bogolubov lost, he was stripped away from all the titles that he won in Soviet chess. His name was vilified in press and his chess games were not published anymore in his homeland. The chess federation had also to distance themselves from Bogolubov and explain their mistake. I'm quoting now from a publication that followed announcement of Bogolubov's withdrawal of citizenship. Bogolubov is an example of bourgeois chess professional, a professional without tradition, without love for art, a professional with a morbid sense of self-admiration. Despite all these shortcomings that we knew, we tried to use his great chess talent in the interest of our work. We were wrong. We'll try to be more careful another time. Bogolubov continued playing in Germany after the Nazi takeover, making him possibly a chess player that played for as many as five different countries, including a short-lived Ukrainian interwar state during his stay in Triba, both Weimar and Nazi Germany's Russian Empire and Soviet state. And we have reached the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Please like, subscribe and share it within your community. Do write me in the comments, tell me what do you think about it. And I hope to see you again next week. Have a nice rest of the week. Bye-bye.